Good afternoon and good morning to some. Thank you for joining us, joining us for the Libraries and Museums United for National Summer Learning Day. I'm Laura Johnson, Vice President of Communications for the National Summer Learning Association, and we are thrilled to have our most valuable players, our library and museum partners, to kick off the summer season of learning and fun. We're delighted you've joined us, and before we officially start, we have a few webinar housekeeping items for you. For questions and technical assistance, please use the Q&A box. NSA will not be addressing the chat box today. This webinar is being recorded, and your phone line is muted. So let's get rolling. Libraries and museums truly do rock during the summer and all year long. I've been so amazed personally by the cool experiences and transformations I've seen in my own library and museum community in Maryland. Where kids can check out nature backpacks to explore bugs and slugs or channel their inner rock star in a recording studio. Where museum programs like Mother Goose on the Loose take learning straight to the streets with the goal of opening eyes and changing lives. And so when we collectively harness the power of all of this during the summer, our children can start the school year strong and thrive. This webinar is about how we collectively lift our voices, engage our communities, and shine a bright spotlight on the incredible role libraries and museums play in keeping all kids learning, safe, and healthy every summer. We hope you'll leave with some fresh ideas to join us in our National Summer Learning Day and to promote the way summer learning blossoms in your community. A quick note about the National Summer Learning Association, many of you already know as well, um, but for 25 years, the National Summer Learning Association, we've been the only national nonprofit exclu exclusively focused on closing the achievement gap through high quality summer learning opportunities and you can see kind of what our focus areas have been over the last few years. But our vision is that all children and youth will have access to high quality summer learning experiences to help them succeed in college, career, and life. We believe that communities must coordinate to use resources efficiently and expand access to high quality summer learning opportunities so all children can have memorable, enriching summer experiences. In that spirit, I'd like to introduce our founder and CEO, Matthew Boulay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm in uh, Salem, Oregon, so it's uh, uh, still technically morning for us. Um, as Laura said, um, we are uh, celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. Uh, one of the exciting things about this webinar is uh, that we're going to announce um, National Read Aloud Day and National and our, and our first summer learning book. We're thrilled to be doing that, but I have to say up front, uh, I'm a little embarrassed it took us 25 years uh, to, to get a, a, a book that we could all read aloud together. So a little late, uh, better late than never, and, and thank you to, to, to Brian, who you'll, you'll hear from in just a few minutes. Um, uh, we like to say uh, that uh, librarians were the first champions of summer reading. I think that's true long before there's research about summer learning loss. Uh, librarians were championing uh, summer reading programs. Uh, and we also uh, uh, like to think that uh, museums offer some of the most innovative uh, summer learning activities by their very nature. Um, and so a large part of our work uh, at NSLA uh, is promoting high quality programs. Uh, but part of that, I think, is reinventing what summer learning uh, is and what summer learning means to folks. I know that for uh, huge numbers of people, when we say summer learning, people hear summer school. And that's really not uh, what we're talking about. Uh, these days. The, the best programs, the highest quality programs, the most exciting programs are ones, as you all know, that are, that are uh, active, engaging, there's project-based learning, there's a combination of, of uh, active 
uh, and enrichment and outdoor learning uh, as well. Uh, so thanks uh, again for all of uh, all of you for 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 what you're doing in your own communities. Um, uh, a, a little bit of history about uh, summer learning here on this slide, but but really I think for 25 years it's been an evolution in terms of how we think about summers and summer learning um, and in terms of uh, championing uh, the work to policymakers, um, school board folks, uh, legislators, the folks who um, you know, control some of the uh, uh, funding that can support um, all of our programs. Just want to highlight on this slide our Excellence in Summer Learning Award Program. Our friends in Chicago uh, won the award a couple years ago. You, you'll, you'll hear from them, but an extraordinary program. And again, one that is very different from what folks five or 10 years ago might have thought as summer school. Really, um, this is a very different type of of approach that they've been doing in Chicago and one's uh, one that we're really pleased and, and proud to to partner with. Um, uh, something that's not on this slide but is some of the training and technical assistance uh, and support that we provide to programs and partners around the country. Um, we make um, as much of our materials as, as, as possible are free and easily downloadable for parents um, educators, librarians alike. We're beginning as much as we can to translate those materials into Spanish. So hopefully you'll, you'll find some stuff on the website um, that you can, you know, download and, and distribute to, to folks in your community. Uh, you know, summer learning uh, really is about uh, children, uh, children um, and the opportunity to um, engage with them in a way that's different uh, than what what the constraints of the school year offer, um, but but there's also uh, you know a financial uh, way to think about this, uh, 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 something that has to do uh, with investments in our children, um, and so um, you know this slide is is part of the story that we tell policymakers, you know that that as we should, we invest significant resources in kids. Uh, as a nation, uh, but unfortunately, most of that uh, investment stops over the summer months. And um, if you think about investing in our kids and their growth and achievement as a return on that investment, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense to walk away from them over the summer months. I know you all know that. I know I'm preaching to the crier uh, um, because of the very nature of the work you do. Um, but this is one of the ways that, that we're uh, talking to policymakers and, and trying to get the story out. Um, you know, and then, and then um, uh, our audience, our partners include uh, schools and school districts, uh, libraries, museums, community uh, programs, um, parents and, and teachers, and um, uh, getting kids ready for the next school year is, is part of what uh, we're trying to do. But of course, it's not the, the only thing. And the experience that kids can have over the summer uh, is, is, a, is, a, is an important piece of what we're doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause here. We at NSLA are always happy to hear from you. Uh, um, you, know, you. You can find all our contact info um, uh, online. Um, but, but I think it makes sense to, uh, to let our, our partners um, uh, you know, spend a, a little more time uh, talking about their work. So Nina Lindsay has been a, a, a champion uh, for a long time. It's a real pleasure uh, to introduce her. Uh, Nina, if, if you're online and can hear me, take it away. Thank you so much, Matthew. Um, and thank you all for being here. I'm Nina Lindsay and I'm the president of the Association for Library Service to Children. Um, joining you today from Oakland, California. And uh, I just, we all know that so many communities do not have equitable access to learning opportunities in the summer of exactly the type, type that Matthew has been talking about. Um, and that this has long-term impacts for youth and families. 
this gives libraries a unique responsibility to respond. Um, we're positioned to reach and engage communities around learning and literacy in a unique way. Um, and importantly, we know how to make it fun. So I'm uh, so glad to be here today. Um, ALSC is really proud to partner with the National Summer Learning Association in this work and to engage in their vision of keeping all kids learning safe and healthy every summer. From our traditional and effective summer reading programs to our work expanding, expanding STEM programming and creativity, to forays as summer lunch providers, libraries are key to this vision, and we rely on our partners to continuously improve and advance this work. So today we're very excited to join NSLA in celebrating July 12th, 2018 Summer Learning Day with the announcement of our official Summer Learning Ambassador, Brian Collier, and Summer Learning Day's National Read Aloud of Trombone Shorty. This is a perfect opportunity for libraries and museums to share the value we bring in bridging the learning gap. I hope you will all join in the celebration and help spread the word in your communities and on social media. Brian is a renowned illustrator and four-time Caldecott Award honoree, most recently for the picture book Trombone Shorty, for which he also won a Coretta Scott King Illustrator Award. His work evokes the emotional landscape of children today, connecting them to the tangible achievements of real heroes cultivating multiple literacies and celebrating the reader's imagination. Uh, and we are so proud and pleased he is able to join us today. Brian. Thank you. Well, um, it's great to be here. Uh, it's great that we, are, we have a book that we can all um, get behind and get under and, and just champion all over um, the universe. And, um, with, with Trombone Shorty, uh, what I really was really drawn to this project was how to create a, a project that we can actually see the sound, see the music in it. So when we look at this three-part panel here, this triptych of, of different uh, angles of Trombone Shorty, I love the fact that I wanted those, the music to swirl out of his horn. You know, and that's the first thing you see, that music swirling out of the horn and 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 hopefully as a as a young reader I want them to be engaged where they want to know well, what else is next if it starts off like this and who is this young boy this trombone shorty and what is the story about and that's the hook and the engagement that I wanted to possess and with trombone shorty it with the young readers he's their age he looks like them and they're, they're doubly, uh, they double down on this book because of that. I think um, the fact that he's, they could be him as well. You know, they feel like they could be him as well. And with this particular image here, uh, in the research of, of, of Troy Andrews and Trombone Shorty, um, this destination of New Orleans, only in New Orleans can you walk down the street and find a discarded trombone in the alley. Nowhere on the planet can that ever happen. So that's, that intrigued me as well. And I want you to pay close attention to the crown that, the, that are silhouetted on their heads. All the, the trombone shorty, his brother and his cousins and his, his five o'clock band. And that's there because even as young kids, they knew they were musical royalty. They grew up submerged in music. They saw the greatest musicians on the planet up close. And so that embodied them as well, even as young, young people. That's so exciting to be in the area and be actually motivated and, and can dream that big dream, musical royalty at even before you got the instrument in your hand. And the funny thing about it, it all came true. It all really came true for them. And they are musical royalty for, for the whole planet. And that's the destination of New Orleans, and that's the celebration of the life of Trombone Shorty that is unfolding in front of us. With this particular image, I want you to hear the sound and see the sound, the blast of 
that incredible horn that Troy plays. I went on tour with him and did about five dates, and he blew my mind. I never knew that a trombone could be that lead, like a lead singer, a powerhouse, and he blows you away. And then you couple it with the history of Bo Diddley, a young trom trombone shorty, when Bo Diddley asked him, so what you going to play? And he has the confidence to say, just follow me. Because his older brother James said the same thing when he was a little boy as well. So just follow me. He had that kind of command, that kind of power. You've got to follow this. You've got to be a part of this. And that's what we're some, sort of celebrating, that kind of um, absolutely incredible in energy. And in the summertime, that's better than the pool to me. It beats the pool. So, and here we are, and it's a follow-up, the, the five o'clock band, where you see them, um, they're superheroes. They're walking they're taller than the buildings, and it's the play, it's the, it's the follow-up of the trombone shorty. Yes, they can ask some questions. So, um, should I go on? Okay, I guess I do. So, um, what do we want? What I really want to discuss as well as real time in terms of the book and what it means for kids in the summer. I have children. Um, I knew what uh, books were for me in the summertime growing up. I had the old bookmobile that come, came down that old country road that was, had air conditioning. We didn't have air conditioning, but that bookmobile did with all those books. So that was exciting. And it, this stuff sort of, the summertime conjures up those kinds of memories for me as it relates to children and books and reading. And my wife and I, we talk about that all the time to, to push and motivate our children to read, read, read. And we read to them and they read to us every, every single night even throughout the summer, because we know that loss that happens when the books go down and everybody jumps in the pool and barbecues and runs around and plays and, and all that stuff is important, but you can incorporate this in the books. The books can do the same exact thing. Choi made his first instrument. We can, we, that's the first project. Make your own instrument. Imagine what this was like, a young boy trying to figure out how to play a horn. You know all those all those activities, and then when you talk, couple it with um, in the book. If you're talking about New Orleans, you're talking about gumbo. You're talking about a cooking project. You're talking about all these the music and incorporate all these ideas um, as a platform and in the art, the creating of it combined. That's your day. That'll that'll do it, and you move on and just expand it from there. I think that's the, and you play the music. New Orleans music, you can play trombone, shorty's music, and that'll do. A, that's another dimension, and that's body movement and dance and all those activities. It's not a stagnant activity. It's about motion and movement. If you look at the book, it's about motion and, and movement. And when you see trombone shorty at the end of the book, when he's um, in a hot air balloon, well, well, that was me conjuring up my childhood with the book. Harold and the Purple Crayon, that's what he, when he looked over, drew a mountain and climbed and he fell and he, he drew that hot air balloon. That was, that was the connection for me with this book, you know. So your imagination can go all those other places and you connect not only the trombone shorty but with other books as well and see all the meaning and all the wonder that's all, that's sort of embodied in it. And that's what I try to capture when I'm creating a book. I'm, I'm, I'm going back to my childhood and pulling out everything that I can remember, whether it be Harold, whether it be um, Snowy Day and Peter and all those wonderful books. It plays itself out with trombone shorty. It's all there. Yeah. Pass it along to Laura. Pass it along to Laura. Great. Thank you, Brian, so much for that. It's hard to, uh, to follow up that inspiring introduction to Trombone Shorty, but I'll do my best. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Laura Huerta Maigas, and I am the executive director of the Association of Children's Museums. We are the world's largest professional association, representing more than 300 children's museums uh, around the world, with a little over 270 open children's museums in the United States. We are so excited to be partners in supporting NSLA and Summer Learning Day and Summer Learning in general. As you all can imagine, summer is the busiest time for children's museums, as well as most museums across the country. And museums absolutely see themselves as a critical part of the learning landscape for children and families throughout the year. But again, particularly in summer months um, that are generally unprogrammed for the majority of children in our country. And we're so excited this year um, to be joining the effort formally around Summer Learning Day because we think that um, museums are particularly positioned to be great community spaces for family learning experiences, much like our partners in, li in library systems. Um, museums offer special summer camps throughout the summer months. Um, that focus on all kinds of content from maker to Legos to art camps, as well as discovery camps, archaeology camps, etc. For children from ages as young as two years old to 14 years old. And these are much more than just uh, fun entertain entertainment opportunities for children. Uh, most of the camps in, uh, that are held by museums are not only focused on the specific discipline or a core idea of the camp, but also have strategies and curricular supports built into them to support the development and sustainability of core academic skills like literacy and math knowledge. And in addition, as Matthew mentioned earlier, there is also a deep focus because they are group-based activities on helping children to develop those critical social and emotional skills that are so important for them in their persistence and success in the classroom. And in addition to camps, many, many museums offer regular um, special drop-in class programs that again span um, the spectrum from cooking classes to story times to maker experiences and facilitated art experiences that are available at any time to all families. And we recognize that um, many museums charge admission fees and there can be a hurdle to admissions for families, especially those that are stressed or under-resourced. And so we're so happy to also be able to leverage our own initiative and partnership with the Institute of Museum and Library Services called Museums for All that offers free and reduced admission to individuals that are receiving food assistance. There are also almost 300 museums, not just children's museums, but museums of all types across the country that are part of the Museums for All uh, admissions program. And we're looking forward to leveraging uh, their opportunities to lift up the importance of summer learning um, throughout the summer. And you should be able to look out both on the ACM website, which is childrensmuseums.org, as well as on the Summer Learning Day website for events at museums and children's museums across the country. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. This is Liz McChesney. I'm the Director of Children's Services at the Chicago Public Library System, our 80 branch library system here in Chicago, and just so delighted to be with everyone today. Um, we have seen that libraries and museums have been great players in the band of summer learning. Sorry, Brian, for the bad pun, but we um, see that our instruments are important in this band. And now, with thanks to organizations like National Summer Learning Association, we're really owning that role in summertime. Um, Tyler, can you advance for me? Some of the many ways that we're helping to develop, there we go, Oops. some of the many ways that we're helping to develop 
um, partnerships together between our friends in the museum world can be seen right here in our own uh, landscape of Chicago, where together with museums, particularly our Museum of Science and Industry, we're leveraging our learning and our partnerships, our expertise, and our reach to serve more kids across the region together. And together, we're helping to develop critical thinking skills, and as Lauta just said, to develop those social-emotional learning skills that come from 21st century learning. We're leveraging literacy and core curricular strategies with math and STEM as well and as literacy and combining them together for really fun, non-school-like approaches to learning that help reinforce what kids are learning in school. These are all slides of our partnerships here in Chicago. From professional development of librarians on the far left to content development to field trips and providing access to area museums and zoos to in-house programming with trained teams, we're seeing that kids are really able to reach for the stars. And this is catching on. Uh, the ALSC division of ALA has convened a three-year task force to study recommendations for out-of-school time learning to disseminate to us all as a field nationally. The Urban Library Council has been working in this field and has a strategic partnership with NSLA as well. And they have an online toolkit that can be found um, at urbanlibraries.org, their website. Together, we're helping prepare kids for a college and career pathway and give kids the skills and confidence to navigate the world one summer at a time. So we're really pleased that there are five anchor library systems all across the country who are joining us in the celebration of Trombone Shorty, Brian Collier, and our first summer read aloud. And those are the City Library of Salt Lake City, who is going to be hosting a read aloud program for hundreds of kids. The King County Library System, just outside of Seattle, and we are seeing that they're doing all sorts of programs in their library around the July 12th Summer Learning Day. Um, and an example of that is the Junk Jam Band that will be uh, convened at the White Center where kids will be making instruments and playing them. In Nashville, at the Nashville Public Library, there'll be a read-along program with hundreds of kids in attendance. And in San Francisco, there are 20, 19 trombone shorty programs happening across the city for Summer Learning Day. And in a special partnership with the Museum of Modern Art, the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art, there will be a program with National Park Service Rangers, Art and Music, all lifting up Summer Learning Day and trombone shorty. And here in Chicago, all 80 of our libraries will be hosting Summer Learning Day programs. We'll be tooting horns and making sound happen across our library and with our friends at the Museum of Science and Industry. So there are lots of ways to celebrate National Summer Learning Day. Again, it's July 12th. And programs can be held all during that week. And Laura will talk more about ways to register your program and hold it up. But there are so many ways to celebrate this wonderful book. Brian was talking about seeing sound and how Trombone Shorty could see the sound. And readers of this beautiful book can too. Draw sound this summer. Make collages with kids that are reminiscent of Brian's art. Make a crown making party or read aloud any one of Brian's beautiful books to celebrate summer learning. Incorporate art, science, music into your programming. You know how to do this. But for sure, invite your elected officials to come. Invite your media. Heaven knows we need more good news these days. And this is certainly one of those things. Summer Learning Day, the role of libraries and museums, and the role of our summer learning ambassador is sure something to be celebrated. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to my partner, Brett Nicholas, from the Museum of Science and Industry. Brett? Hello. Uh, my name is Brett Nicholas from the Museum of Science and Industry. Thank you, Liz. Um, and I'm going to uh, talk a little bit about some fun science connections to Trombone Shorty. Uh, the role that I play here at the museum is helping uh, educators that work in an out-of-school setting really embrace science. And one of the things to think about when doing that is this isn't about delivering content. Um, 
you know, there's been a lot of people have talked today about how we want out of school learning and summer learning to look different than what we experience in the classrooms. So one way to think about that is it's not about delivering content, but it's about uh, embracing the way that kids are natural scientists already. They want to know why. They always ask why, and they want to explore their world about them. Uh, so we're going to help them develop some skills like observation and prediction and experimentation uh, through a couple of instruments that we are going to make that really support the trombone shorty story. So I'm going to show you how to do one of them uh, step by step. It is so quick and so easy that I can do it right here for you. Uh, the second one takes a little bit more time, but it is really, really engaging and has some great literary connections. So um, really, this is all about uh, creating interesting opportunities for kids to explore science, explore sound, and make their own discoveries. So with that, I'm going to switch over to my other camera here. And I'm going to show you how to make a sound sandwich. There we go. Uh, so to make a sound sandwich, you only need uh, these couple of materials. I have a couple of craft sticks here. I have uh, a nice fat rubber band, one of the thick ones. I have two smaller rubber bands, and I have two little pieces of straw. These, this is just a drinking straw that I cut down into one-inch pieces. And with these simple materials, you can make your own instrument, maybe not as sophisticated as a trombone, but you can make your own instrument, and you can explore sound. So to do this, the first step is to simply stretch that rubber band over the craft stick long ways, and so it's nice and, and tight there. And we're going to take two little bits of straw and we're going to tuck them right underneath and they're held in place by uh, by that rubber band. We're going to make the sandwich part of this so to speak and put the other craft stick right on top and we're going to hold that craft stick in place with these two rubber bands on the edges. There we go. We have made our sound sandwich and here we go. Okay, so to use this, all you need to do is simply blow through that middle part there, and you make a sound, right? Now, if you make one of these, you can actually feel on your lips the vibration. Same way, actually, that a trombone is played. Uh, uh, I used to be a trombone player. Uh, when you buzz your lips, you are making a vibration. The same thing is happening here. Now, if you're doing this with kids, instead of telling them what's happening, you want to ask them questions, right? How do you think that sound is being made? What do you think is happening? What's happening to the rubber band? Uh, what happens if you blow louder? What happens if you blow softer? Is there a way that you think you can make a different kind of pitch? And let them experiment with it. Now, if I happen to move uh, this little straw here, it makes different pitches. So a really fun, simple musical instrument you can make tons of noise with this. Um, we love uh, doing this with big classrooms of kids and then unleashing them back to their parents uh, so that they can make a lot of fun noises. But it's, it's really great. And the science here, while it's about exploration and figuring out how this works, um, it's grounded in real science. Sound is always a vibration. You can feel that vibration in your lips. You can, you can hear the vibration with your ears. So sound sandwich is one of these. There's a write-up uh, for this that is available. The other uh, instrument that is really fun to make is a rain stick. And traditional rain sticks are made out of things like bamboo and cactus, and, and you take uh, cactus thorns and stick them through the inside of the cactus. Uh, but you can also make one with stuff that you have around the house. This is a cardboard mailing tube, but certainly a, uh, a, a cardboard tube from a paper towel roll, roll works really well. And I've stuck through here a uh, little tea pins. You can use nails also, and if you look in the middle, you can see that there's probably a hundred or so little pins in here. I made one that has a lot uh, in it. So to make this into a rain stick, I need to cover up the ends. I've used cups so you can see what's happening, but you can put uh, tin foil around the end of this with a rubber band. And then you need something on the inside. Traditional rain sticks are uh, oftentimes made with pebbles, but what I have here is a little cup of rice and beans. And if you listen to this as I gently pour it down the tube, You have a nice rain-like sound. Um, you can move it back and forth. 
And so the cool thing about a rain stick, not only is it a fun instrument on, on its own, and you can also experiment with how you make it to do experiments to make different noises, uh, put different materials inside or change how the pins are, how many pins, or if you have different patterns. But the cool thing about this is it is really, uh, it is really great to make connections to literature with, right? We learn so much through telling stories. So if you want to tell a story about weather, well, you can recreate part of that story through uh, making a rain stick. Uh, you can create other kinds of instruments that mimic the sound of thunder or mimic the sound of hail and really uh, start a band that is about telling stories about weather. Uh, so there's lots of fun storytelling connections there. Um, and of course, uh, lots of cultural connections because rain sticks are traditional uh, instruments that have been made by indigenous people. So those are two really fun instruments to make that are really simple. You don't need any specialized equipment, stuff that you probably have at your library or at, you know, at your home. Um, so one of the things that I want to uh, remind people about if they're trying science and maybe they're, they're trying to teach science, and maybe they're a little hesitant about, I'm not a science teacher, that's okay. This is about setting up opportunities for kids to learn. You don't have to have all the answers. You can ask the kids questions that they have asked you. If they ask you why, you ask them why back. What is it that you think makes that happen? What are the discoveries that you can make? How can you figure out how this works? And then providing uh, a, a, an environment where they, where they can be confident and where you can support them without necessarily giving them all the answers. So go out and do some science along with Trombo and Shorty this summer. Um, and the instructions for both of these are available both on our website at msichicago.org slash summerbrain and on the NSLA website. Thank you. Awesome, Brett. I am going to try that with my 12 year old. When he asks me why, I'm going to ask him why. Yeah, <laughs> we're going to get our sales sandwich for sure. Thank you so much. Those are incredible ideas. Very simple. So thank you for, for sharing those. Oh, no. So uh, we wanted to just share with you uh, a couple of ways that you can, uh, one, first of all, sign up for Summer Learning Day. It's very easy on our website. Um, we have an event tracker that has a lot of um, uh, events that are posting as we speak. And so we want to, to use that event tracker as a way to really let the world know what's happening in your community. Um, just today, we got a call from U.S. News and World Report, and they are, of course, covering summer learning loss. And so not only do they want to hear the national story, but they, they want very local examples. So we encourage you to post your events and programs that are happening on or around Summer Learning Day on our event tracker. Uh, you can go to our website at summerlearning.org and uh, look for Summer Learning Day on the drop down and add your event, it's very easy. In terms of other types of resources that we have to support your efforts in your local community, um, we want you to think of this as a season of learning and so spreading the word early and having a steady drumbeat throughout the summer is one of our goals. Uh, so I'd like to take you through a few ideas that we have to support some of your efforts locally. Proclaim Summer Learning Day in your community. Um, you heard us earlier talk about inviting elected officials. And so we have very simple proclamation language that you can uh, send to your local mayor and have them pro proclaim July 12th as Summer Learning Day. Uh, invite them to your read aloud of trom Trombone Shorty. Uh, have our, our local officials um, make a rain stick or a sound sandwich. Uh, get them involved in what you're doing in your community. Very soon on our website, your communications teams can find uh, other outreach tools like an, an op-ed template and press release template along with um, many other resources to help you spread the word of what's happening in your community. Um, on the national level, NSLA has a number of wonderful national media partners. And so we'll be working at the national level to spread awareness through our partnership with Clear Channel Outdoor and iHeartRadio. Uh, they both will deliver uh, a wonderful public service campaign as they have over the last two years, uh, which will include digital billboards across 28 of their markets and radio public service announcements across 800 plus radio stations. 
this is a great opportunity to strengthen relationships with your own local iHeart radio stations. So, you know, invite a local uh, anchor to visit a program or talk about your summer program on the local radio. Uh, as Liz said, we need more good news out there. And so uh, tapping into some of our national resources at the local level is a great way to do that. Next slide. One of the other resources for parents, uh, we have a wonderful partnership with Learning Heroes and the National PTA. Uh, this is a downloadable flyer that you can find on our website on the Summer Stride, and it has uh, really a wonderful plan for helping parents uh, get their, their children into the Summer Stride. Next slide. And finally, in your sandbox of summer learning resources, uh, we have a couple more things that uh, that we'll be posting very soon. Uh, but we have a tip sheet on celebrating Summer Learning Day in your community that you can find on our website, as well as other downloadable tips for tweens and teens that they can do at home or in their community. Next slide. And very soon, you will have uh, four libraries and museums, a digital toolkit that will have uh, some very easy plug-and-play posts that you can just um, use at uh, starting tomorrow almost. I think we'll have it ready pretty soon. Um, but these are um, ways that you can spread the word on social media uh, along with the actual posts. We'll have images that you can also um, add to them to make it very visual and compelling on, on social media. And so the last slide here is just a few of some of the uh, things that we've been talking about. These are resource links, and this will be available after uh, the webinar. Um, on the Chicago Public Library site are a number of wonderful activities and program extensions for Trombone Shorty, so feel free to check that out. Um, as I mentioned, the proclamation language for uh, your municipal leaders can also be found on our website the Summer Strike Flyer from Learning Heroes and PTA, as well as tips for celebrating National Summer Learning Day.